It's the little things most of us take for granted that Tim Hemis misses most. A simple high five. There you go. <laughs> a reach for his girlfriend's hand. On this day, for the first time in seven years, Tim did both. But with a robotic arm, he controls with his mind. Tim's journey here began in 2004 after an evening motorcycle ride ended in tragedy. I got stuck on a guardrail, and when I fell off, uh, I basically just snapped my neck. I was found a minute or two later. My lips were already blue. After more than a year in hospitals, Tim was able to go home. But the life he returned to was nothing like the life he once enjoyed. For me to grab a drink, feed myself, open up a door, that just doesn't happen. I'm fully dependent on somebody else. If I can't ever walk again, okay, i got to get my arms back. A team at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center is working to help Tim do that, or at least the next best thing. Building on a project that worked in monkeys, the team is studying whether a tiny computer grid placed on the surface of Tim's brain can actually help him and other paralyzed patients move and control prosthetic limbs. What studies have shown is that those parts of the brain that used to control the arm are still there, ready to control the arm. It's really the connection that's lost. What Boninger's team is trying to do is reestablish that connection. The grid is a series of electrodes that pick up the brain signals that control movement. Those signals are then transmitted to a computer processor that controls the robotic limb or other device. They're able to imagine moving their arm and their brain, and then cells in their brain fire. We record the electrical activity with this grid, and then we use those same signals then to control another device. So they, when they think, I want to reach for something, we then send those signals through to the robotic arm and it reaches for something. First, Tim learned how to control a computer cursor. Then, the robotic arm. It's a real piece of metal that you're moving with your brain. To be able to do that and to see it and for it to react to what you're thinking about is absolutely amazing to me. Despite his enthusiasm, Tim's role in the study was short-lived. As of now, the FDA only allows the computer grid to remain on the brain for 30 days, so Tim's has already been removed. Still, Tim believes researchers in this area are on to something big and that this is just the first step towards a future of self-dependence. We proved so many things, and the future is going to come. Kelly Daschle, Associated Press.